encouragement. You know, I believe that I can, I can do this. And then all of a sudden it says, I believe I can fly. And, and, and it just, the song just takes off from there. And I believe that if you, if, if I were to do the song, I'd do it. I, I'd say, go listen to I Believe I Can Fly. Okay. Okay, yeah. I'm, I'm highlighting that yeah. with my highlighter here. Yeah. It is that kind of a song, but it needs to have that kind of a lift. Pardon me? Nothing. No, I didn't say anything. I'm just writing down here. I need lift. Yeah, I don't know if you heard me or not, but. Uh. Yeah. So, yes. Yeah. So, um, okay. listen to that. I believe I can fly and then um, work within those parameters to give your song the type of lift that that song has. All right. See, All what right. a lot of people um, don't realize is that that you can pattern your song after a hit song. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Okay. You're not plagiarism. It's not plagiarism because you have different lyrics and different melody. But if you make your song rise lyrically and melodically, like that particular song, you're going to have something. Okay. And um, uh, um, that goes for John as well. Thank you, Clay. Thank you, sir. Anybody else, uh, Jimmy? Uh, no, nah, I was going to bring out one of mine, but I figured now nah, we'll just keep moving along here. Because you brought up a point that I was kind of Jimmy? wondering about. <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm still here. Am I? Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah, yeah now we can, All right. yeah. All right. Yeah, no, you, you did brought up an interesting point where um, <clears throat> you, you, your songs have the same kind of a vibe or groove. That whole blurred lines thing, man, that's, that's just a real mess. And um, what's your thought on that? Okay, with the blurred line, it was plagiarism all the way through. So, you know, one of the things that that I try to do in my songwriting is not, I can be inspired by a song. And in fact, today, um, I was listening to a song and I said, wow, I like the way they did that. Well, I'm not going to, to, to do the that exact same thing that the other writers of that song did. But I will bring in and <clears throat> I will look for a melody that will bring in that kind of emotion. Um, I will look for a type of rhythm that gives me that sort of a feel. And I'll make sure by listening to what I listened to or what I was inspired by, that my stuff doesn't sound anything like it. It was only used to help me to feel what I felt in that hit song. Yeah, because there's a lot of that kind of thing Still there. going on now. Yeah. Because um, like Bruno Mars, he had a similar situation. I mean, um, Uptown Funk, it has a lot of things in there that sound like samples of, you know, old uh, old songs. And then uh, there's a, a new one that's on the charts right now. Yeah, that yeah. So sounds a lot like um, Last Christmas, I think, George the George Michael song. But it, it's like on the top of the charts mm -hmm. at the moment. I forgot the name of the song now. But, um, you know, those, those are the kinds of things where <clears throat> I, I'm kind of looking at, well, there's 12 notes <laughs> you know, in the Western scale. And there's only so many ways you can put them together and, and make sense of it all. So it becomes a little bit difficult. But, but you know, there's there's so many melodies that you can use to take you to where you're going. You don't have to use the exact same melody or the exact same words to 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 take you where you really want to go. Like, 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 I believe I can fly. 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 You know, you're not using the same words, but I'm using those words that show you different directions that I could take 
if I wanted to write um, a, a song like that. Um, so it's that's the important thing is to to just only be inspired by. That's like looking at a woman and say, oh, I'd love to marry someone like that. Yeah, but she's someone else's wife. Yeah, but maybe there's a brunette and she's blonde. Maybe there's somebody else for me. And so the same thing as it relates to a song. You, you listen to something that's great, that maybe is kind of like your song, and then you, you just go back listening to it to make sure you're not sounding like that song, but at the same time, you're listening to that song to see, am I giving the same type of feeling and emotion? Am I allowing the song to rise at that certain point in time? Here's what I would suggest. Go to my website, claydrayton.com. And um, I have a songwriting course. I have with three, over 3,000 students in 110 countries taking my online online songwriting course and it it talks it takes you from a to z it's about 40 different videos and they're they're all there to help a songwriter um work his way out of mediocrity into where you can become um one who's a a, a very good songwriter I'm just saying. Uh, yeah, I say the same things that I'm saying now in my course because those things on the wall didn't come because I wasn't trying to be the best that I could be. And um, never get married to your song. Never be married to your song. A song is only... Um, ready once it's recorded after it's been recorded that's a whole nother thing but up until that point i'd be making changes every chance i get we had written a song um for the jackson five they had recorded it and everything and um a and r said okay well we need a rewrite rewrite yep here's what you need to do well we couldn't say well i want to keep it the way it is we had to go back and rewrite the song with the same feel, with the same melody, but with different lyrics. And that, that became one of uh, one of the songs that uh, made it on those up on those albums there, singles. You know, it was all about rewrite. They said we need to make these changes, and we made those changes. And um, I, I have songs on a whole lot of artists, a lot of artists. So I, I know what I'm talking about. And I'm simply saying that it's important to analyze your song and say, could it be better? But you've got to have something to compare it to. What uh, new artists have, have you been, or new writers at least, uh, have you been hearing that uh, we might want to listen to? You know what I would say? The best thing to do is listen to country. Listen to country because they write some of the best lyrics and they have some of the greatest topics that you'll ever want to hear. You can't go wrong. I got a chance to go to Nashville. I was invited to Nashville. Um, I went out there in March and um, uh, it went well. You know, I got a chance to write with some Nashville writers and I'll be going back again. Um, but, but I believe there's some of the, some of the best songwriters out there because um, they know how to tell a story and they now know how to use great lyrics. And the melodies are good. And um, I recommend um, listening to country. You don't have to look, 
listen to the uh, the uh, traditional country, but the new country is really good. One of the biggest songs that's out there right now, though, is just just the side of obscene. So I don't know. Uh, I don't know if you've heard that song, "Dick Down in Dallas." I think it was. <laughs> it's, uh, and, and, you know, it no, I haven't like, heard that one. Oh yeah, yeah, no, that, that's right up at the top of the country charts, and um, it, it's interesting because it, it follows all the old uh, okay. uh, traditional well, here's, country. Here's one. There is, um, there's a show that comes on TV called Songland. Have any of you seen that? Did anybody hear me? Yeah, yeah, we we, we were all nodding Hello? heads. Oh, yeah, I think th I think Hello? that's one of the best shows. I have I have not seen it. It's a, Songland. If you're not looking at it. Go on YouTube and type in Songland. And 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 you have artists who are there who want to get a song, a new song, and they have these writers, new writers that come in and they pitch their songs and then they're critiqued and then they're changed and moved around so they can become better songs. And, um, you know, um, those groups have done well because of those songs, but they were taught um, how to do uh, do their songs. They were shown the flaws or how they could make it better. So go on Songland is, and um, it's gonna be really good. And YouTube, it has a whole season of them. So you'll be able to watch about 10 of them at least, 10 or 13. And you'll see what I'm saying. It was, uh, uh, sir, was J John uh, Legend one of the uh, participants on that particular show by any chance? Do you recall? Because he's so good at- I didn't see him on, okay. I didn't see him on any of them. Okay, okay. I saw, I saw Rascal Flatts, um, um, Boys um, to Men. Um, oh gosh. Boys to Men. Boys to Men. Yep. 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 And um, Lady Antebellum, or Lady A, as they're called, and it and it's a hit song that's out right now that that was on that show. Wow. So please watch Songland. Uh, go on YouTube. Great. Guys, hear me? Thank I you. Will, we, I will check that out. Was I heard? Yes. You, that yes. was heard, and thank you very much. Yes. Thank you. Those help quite a bit. <clears throat> For myself, I've been actually starting to listen to a little bit of radio again because I was kind of surprised that some of the stuff I've been hearing is uh, actually not too bad. Um, that uh, new collaboration with Anderson Pack um, and Bruno Mars, that's, that came out pretty good. I'm really liking that stuff. Yeah, you mentioned collaboration. That is a key. Most hit songs are written by more than one person. And and what happens is if you have a male and a female writing together, she's going to come with a female perspective. He'll be male perspective. Um, she may have grown up uh, uh, wealthy. He may have grown up in poverty. Uh, they go to different schools. They have different backgrounds. Different, all of that works toward a good song because you're not just talking about you and what you've experienced. But you're blending the two two writers together in the lifestyles and the backgrounds and and the histories of these people and the educations of these writers, and um, you end up creating a really good song. And um, 
at Motown, we had lyric writers and melody writers. Mm. If you're a strong melody writer, get a great lyric writer. If you're a great lyric writer, then get a strong melody writer. If you don't play an instrument, write with someone who does play an instrument. If you've only written with men, write with a woman. If you've only written with women, write with a man. But it's, it's about being able to express yourself in a way that um, you haven't heretofore. Um, when I was in Nashville, they say, well, Clay, you got anything you want to work on? I said, yeah, this, boom. And then they said, well, we like it. I just had a hook. And in three hours, we finished the song. Nice. When you Turned out when, great. When you come to three a, of us. What do you bring to a collaboration session? Um, how do you for, know? I always you bring something. Bring. It'll always, I, I have a. Um, okay. Well, okay. When, uh, for example, when I went to Nashville, when I woke up and I've written a lot of hooks that are incomplete that need more, you know, the, the, the rest of the lyrics and all that. Um, when I woke up that morning uh, uh, and getting ready for the uh, writing session, that song just, it just popped into my spirit. And I said, okay, I, I'm sure that's gonna be the song that I'm gonna work on. So I get there and the first thing they say is, okay, Clay, and I never had never written with them. And he said, um, there's any, just, is there anything you want to work on? And I said, yeah, the song that's been in my spirit all morning. And when I played it, they said, wow, that's great. Let's work on that. So that's how I determine if I'm at home. Um, I actually come up with a, a hook every day of a different song, different types of genres. And... Um, when I wake up, I'll just hear it in my spirit. I just hear this song. And I said, this is the one I need to work on. Mm -hmm. And so um, you don't have to finish this song. You go as far as you feel that you can go with this song and um, and then just leave it. It's, uh, I, I look at, like, look at it like um, a woman giving birth. So first thing happens, the song comes into your spirit. Okay, so the woman's just been, con the, the song's been conceived. Then over a period of time, piece, bits and pieces of the songs will come. You know, part of the first verse, part of the second verse. Sometimes it'll all come out, but you have to go with the flow and work when you feel inspired. Think about, I have a, a board up here that has about um, at least 10 songs that I'm working on. <laughs> 10 have, different songs. I have so I look up at it and I say, oh yeah, I got to work on that one. Yeah, I've got notebooks full of partial songs <laughs> that I haven't gotten back to from years ago. But they're they're waiting for me, and I every once in a yeah. while I go through them and I go, oh, I should pull out this one and work on it. <laughs> yeah, and other people um, can can be of the system like that. For example, years and years ago, okay, I was um, when I was at Motown, and um, uh, I came home. And um, my friend said, my girlfriend said to me at that time, she said she had been listening to these songs that I had written and they were just kind of on a reel to reel tape. And she said, um, Clay, I've been listening to all your songs and this one life of the party is really good. Have you played it for Hal Davis, who was the producer for the Jackson Five? I said, no. I said, Are you sure? She said, yeah. Now that song was years old. I came into Hal's office. I said, I got this song I want you to hear. I played it for him before I finished it. He said, Clay, that's a hit, that's a hit. And so we went into the studio and we recorded that song, but that song was just sitting in a can 
<laughs> so sometimes, well, you know, it, it's like it's 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 like fruit have to ripen, okay? And you may have um, uh, a, a piece of fruit here, but it's it's on a tree and it's green, and you don't want to pick it right then. But over a period of time, when it's gotten more sun and more water and more time, then it's ripe and it's sweet and it's ready, just as God intended. And the same thing with your song. Don't try to rush your song. Take your time. Finish what you can finish and get to the ones that you haven't gotten to. When you feel that, hey, it's time for that song. I feel I've got it for this song. Um, we were at the hospital, as Jimmy said, um, Tammy's mom's in the hospital. And I've been working on this one uh, chorus, this hook, and Lost there, video. there you go back. Nope, still don't, still don't got audio clay. I still don't have your audio. The cliffhanger. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to unmute this one. Nope. I think I lost everybody. There you go. Okay, you're back. Okay, you're back, Clay. Okay. Hey, I made it back. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, so I'm working on this this chorus, and I go to the hospital while we're visiting. I'm still thinking about the chorus, <laughs> trying to find that last line, and I finally got it. So can I, I, I only got may I ask a question, uh, Mr. Drayton? But I was working on Have it you in written? my mind. Uh -oh. uh -huh. I was hoping to ask Mr. Drayton a, qu yes. a, a question. Have you had the experience where you have been writing a song and then uh, you just knew, you said, I know this is the one. I know this is a hit. I can feel it. I just know it. It's talking to me. It's it's like that Oprah moment you're talking about. They stand up and say, there it is. I mean, have you had that experience yourself? Or mostly with collaboration? Okay, say that again because it was... Okay, say that again because the, the sound was breaking up. Okay. I was wondering if you've had the experience where you knew you were you've written a hit. You you felt it. You didn't even need to show it to anybody, or you wanted to show it to somebody just because you were so excited. You did know. You recognized that it was a hit. It had all the elements that you've been speaking to us about. Uh, um, <laughs> no. Interesting. It's because Interesting. there are there are okay yes and no, uh, yes and no. The no is you can't know a hit, you just can't because there's too many factors determining um, what what a hit's gonna be. But you can but there's songs that I've written that I felt oh wow this is really good this is different. I'm working on a couple couple of things now different than I've ever written and I'm really excited about I'm happy about it and so what I've done is I've played it for other people this just to see if there was excitement about the song and um so but once again um when I play it for maybe a, a producer or a, a publisher they may go, well, it's okay. But I, I just, I, from having been in the industry a long time, you just kind of feel, you know, that it's, it's, it's a very competitive song, but it's no guarantee. But it's odd because you had a song that you had it on the shelf for a long time. You took it out, you gave it to this man, and he said, Clay, that's a hit. And, and here you are all this time with this hit on the shelf, and you didn't know it yourself, but it took 
showing it to someone else where it just boom, it just hit them. And so I guess what I'm saying is, is what I'm asking is, uh, you, you, it's like, yeah, you didn't necessarily recognize it yourself, but yet you had all the elements that you've shared with us, uh, but it took another set of ears to, to say, yep, that's it right there. And time. And time. And time. Okay. Because that song was years old. Time. But as I said earlier to, to, I believe, to John, I said, write a good song and it will be found. People, uh, yeah, that's it. That's what I've been looking for. The key is, it's just got to be a really good song, lyrically, melodically, and it's, it's got to be memorable. Let me say this about that. Memorable. Um, I'm now... I'm going to ask you to re, uh, all of you to repeat this phrase of numbers 10, 12, 42, 199, 999, 444, 22, 55, uh, 1,500,000. Repeat it. I got the first six and okay. that's the end of it. Nobody, Nobody can, do, can it. do it. It's because your brain, your your Right. Your brain does not like a lot of uh, a, a lot of stuff. Your your brain likes simplicity. Repeat this one. One, two, three. 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 Simple. Easy. Your brain says, I got it. Mm -hmm. Now, imagine this. You're going to play your song for an artist. And this is a big artist. And he's been listening to a lot of songs all day long. And he's going to listen to yours. Now, the majority of those who are writing today, especially the millennials, have diarrhea of the lyric. Two men gets your song, and it's like one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Memorable. He's going to remember your song and not all of those other ones that had too many lyrics in them. So your chorus, your hook should be simple, melodic, and repetitive. You do that. And um, they're going to remember your song. Okay. I threw that one in for free. It's <laughs> on my course. <laughs> Thank you. Great. Great. Yep. And that find a way to keep it simple and melodic. And that's a hook. People say, what's the difference between a hook and a chorus? My answer, ask a fish. Once a hook gets into a fish's head, it's hard for him to get it out. That's the hook. It's hard to remember a long series of words, but it's easy to remember something that's short and hook. Makes sense, doesn't it? Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. And that's life of the party. Yes, you can. Life of the party. Four words. Life of the party. Life of the party. Yeah. Life yeah. of the party. Okay. Yep. Uh, Simple. That's why when he first heard it, he said, oh, man, that's a hit. Simple, melodic, and hooky. Another good example is my girl. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and a good example of and a good example of a pre chorus is in my girl. Every time before they say my girl, he says, Well, 
I guess you say, what can make me feel this way? There's nothing else to say but my girl. Talking about my girl. Each yeah. time he comes back, well, I guess you say, what can make me feel this way? My girl. Simple, easy is one of the biggest songs, but it was simple. It was repetitive and it was melodic. Yeah. That's great. There's a reason Motown stayed on the top all the time. Mm -hmm. Wow. Great. I know we're having some uh, internet issues. So, so I guess we can probably just cut it short, but thank you so much, Clay. And I really appreciate you coming out, especially with the things that were going on in your personal life uh, today. Um, so you know, again, we'll, we'll remember uh, Tammy's mom in prayer and all that. And um, thanks again for coming and hopefully we'll see you again. Uh, appreciate maybe it. maybe in, in person sometime, you know, and uh, you know, we'll, we're going to put this up on YouTube. So uh, some people uh, will, that should uh, Hopefully soon, and yep. Okay. All right, guys. So, um, 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 <clears throat> but guys, go to go to claydrayton dot com and um, take my songwriting course. See claydrayton dot com to get songwriting. But, uh, All right, C L A Y D R A Y T O N Clay Drayton yeah. dot com. And I have a book called. And I have a book. Yeah, right. And my book too is called "Seize Your Success." Talks about how to become successful at anything. All right. So yeah, definitely, we'll check out your book. Thank you very much once again, Clay. And uh, like I said, hopefully we'll be seeing you uh, sometime soon in person. And uh, once again, uh, we will be having our showcase in person and also online. Uh, thanks again for sticking around, for staying here. Uh, Chris, thank you so much for being here too. And uh, hopefully we'll be seeing all you guys later on. Uh, sorry for all the internet problems and everything else, but I think it uh, kind of worked out okay. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Again, make sure that you... Uh, keep in touch with us on Facebook and uh, online, everywhere that you see us. So uh, it's a little after 9 o'clock. Clay, thank you once again. God bless and take care. Good night, everybody. Thank, thank, you. You. thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, you. thank you, everyone. Okay. Thank you.